Um, so this year we've, um, we've got put together a panel of uh, some different experts. Hopefully there's some different names to the previous years. Um, and hopefully they're going to give you their thoughts on their um, various points of views and expertise. Um, and I think we'll go in order on the slide. So first of all, I'd like to um, invite Ed to give your thoughts for a few minutes. Or, or is there a micro? Hello, good morning, everybody. I'm Ed Armstrong from the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And as some of you know, or maybe don't know, I'm an oceanographer who does not do any oceanography anymore. <laughs> I am involved in data science, data analytics, tools and services. Of course, I work in the large um, archive that serves many of the GRISP products, the, uh, the NASA Jet, um, Jet Propulsion Laboratory Physical Oceanography DAC. And so, of course, my points really have to go, you know, towards uh, these um, new or emerging frontier areas with regards to products in the cloud that uh, I, you know, kind of hammered that point in a few of my presentations. So I think uh, so, uh, some of the key priorities that we want to, to keep tabs on, and this can be done both, um, you know, within our scientist uh, team community and also evangelizing um, in the broader physical oceanography community, um, our, our user base at things like conferences. But we really want to keep abreast of uh, these emerging formats, um, cloud formats and services, you know, things like Zark or Chunk, um, the Pangeo program, which is a nice ecosystem of, of um, Python based tools and services for doing uh, scientific analysis. And the good thing, I think, or the one of the important uh, things, if we're successful in that, is we'll guarantee, hopefully, interoperability across um, all um, physical ocean disciplines. So we'll be interoperable with altimeter missions, with salinity missions, with wind missions that are moving along this same track. Uh, many of these data centers are moving uh, their data in the cloud, um, so it's key that this community we do training, um, either self-training or formalized training on, uh, you know, the various tools and approaches to doing cloud computing. Um, as And this, this this really can involve, too, um, on our part, you know, on, on kind of like the old guard of, of learning some new techniques and even new languages, uh, such as Python and this Pangeo ecosystem. So there's a little onus on us, I think, um, in the GRIS science team to make that kind of like an active, um, you know, make that make that a priority, say, in in our scientific programming evolution, right? So that we're not um, stuck in things like MATLAB or IDL that do not play that well in this new emerging cloud um, open source uh, uh, com uh, community and computing arena. All right. Uh, having said that, um, the cloud, right? The cloud you have to pay for. I did mention, of course, with AW West, where the NASA data is, there is a free tier that you can apply for. You just uh, give them your email and your credit card, and you're allowed 750 hours. That's a pretty stand, a substantial amount of compute. But at the end of the day, of course, um, I guess you have to make some commitment um, to pay, and so maybe that doesn't that doesn't sit well with some people. Um, you know, for instance, myself, I had a free tier account. I actually do some free, free stuff too on my own. Of course, I have a NASA account, but you know, it's not too terribly expensive as long as you don't get too crazy. On the other hand, that still is not going to play for many users around the world who want to date, uh, download the data locally. So we need to be cognizant of that user base and, you know, continue to di uh, design tools and services that are based on open um, APIs and um, open standards so that they can play well, um, hopefully with the tools and uh, computing languages that they're used to. So it's important we don't forget about that. And I think in the PODAC, as I'll show in the training this afternoon, uh, we have some very clever little tools for you to access really any data that's on the NASA cloud through a simple command line interface. Um, it's really not that complicated, but it's very, very powerful. Well, I think uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, of course, uh, we want to prioritize open services and standards and whatever we're developing in both our data and our tools. And I think we're doing things like that, such as the GRIST uh, search catalog that's based on open search. But again, we need to think about 
the next generation of data formats that are cloud friendly. I, I did mention czar, so perhaps we need to think about data transformation methodologies. And we should also think about uh, looking at the GDS2 um, net CDF data model that's really now um, 20 years old. <laughs> we came up with like in the early 2000s. And there are some features in the net CDF that I think would behoove us to look at to implement as our data products become more complex. Um, we shouldn't limit our, our ourselves to um, size anymore. Uh, there's several missions like NISAR and SWAT now, or you know, SWAT mission uh, was mentioned by Suresh that we now have over, we essentially doubled our archive in six months. We're now over a petabyte of SWAT data and we can handle that and we can serve it. And we have the tools to serve the user community. So we shouldn't limit ourselves um, too much in the size of the of our new emerging sea surface temperature products, and that will require a look at the net CDF data model and a re-architecture, and you know leverage some of the features in the net CDF for a data model that we haven't leveraged before, such as groups and hierarchies, um, things of that nature. Well, finally, I wanted to say uh, there's a lot of work going on in the commercial sector too, um, in making uh, tools and cloud services more friendly. So I want to propose that um, if you start doing some serious cloud computing and run into some barriers, things like Dask management, there are actually commercial services that will come in and solve your problem for you. Uh, I did mention this Coiled. Uh, this is a, a for-profit company that uh, is um, has developed a very clever sy system for doing Dask management. So Dask is this uh, paralyzed Python programming library and Coiled allows you to kind of spin up workers just on an as need basis. So at the end of the day, it'll it'll save you both um, time and money at, um, potentially. So there's that. Uh, there's also a company called Earth Mover is a new uh, commercial company. It was recently founded by the founders of Pangeo. So Pangeo is open source and they've taken those open source, um, those open source library and commercialized some aspects of that. So I'm just throwing that out there that there may be services out there in the commercial sector and you don't want to spend hours and hours like figuring out these things you just pay somebody to do it and show you how to do it and then you do it on your own and, and maybe pay a small fee so uh, that's one thing i just wanted to put on the table oh and the other thing of course the grist priorities you know, i think we all know this i think again it's important for us to leverage the emerging community of young investigators and in sea surface temperature and i'm so happy to see a burgeoning community here in India. So we do need uh, some more energy in our GRIST science team meetings to help lead some of these task teams to serve on like the advisory committee, to serve on the SST virtual constellation. As many of us have been with this, the science team for, for many, many years, in fact, decades for me. So that's one point. I think we're all kind of cognizant of that, but just to reiterate that. So just to summarize, you know, the data and tools and the emerging cloud arena are certainly very important. And we want to be cognizant of both self-training and community training for those, as well as keep the, um, the local users, local down users happy through our collection of open tools and services based on standards. And then looking at the emerging, uh, like re-architecting the NetCDF data model um, for future GRIST missions. And I think I'll stop right there. That was five minutes, right? Thank you, Ed. Uh, so the next one is Dr. Kumar Viraj. I'm not yet. So good morning, myself Raj Kumar. Uh, almost four decades I spent in uh, ISRO. Mostly uh, I'm not a oceanographer as such. I am a remote sensing scientist, you can say, because mostly I worked on the remote sensing data and I was uh, involved in the ocean set scatterometer mostly. ISRO's scatterometer mission, I was science lead, and later on I was the NISR science lead from ISRO. So SST is, I watch from the sidelines, I can say, not as a science team member. But uh, I have seen, uh, in four days, I was uh, seeing all this presentation. This is a very, very well-coordinated group, I found it. And uh, all this catalog also, I was seeing very good as Ed was telling. Catalog is from NOAA, I've seen, I've, not other catalogs I've seen from NOAA catalog. Only thing are tools, as you're telling, tools have to be developed in that. Because uh, I'm seeing from the user point of view, not the science team point of view. So what we, a user, uh, if uh, any user comes to this, uh, any site of GHR SST, he has to see what he wants. It should be available to him or uh, him or her. Otherwise, it will be just, uh, we are, giving the product uh, from uh, each agency and uh, maybe well uh, calibrated product, but who will be using and how he'll use, how he'll choose which product is good for him. I think that way we should have some task team 
so that uh, different type of applications i can say that like climate applications we need different uh, uh, accuracies and uh, from the air sea interaction point of view you need a uh, different accuracy and uh, from the applications you don't need very high accuracy like fisheries and for front type you don't need very high accuracy so product should can be defined in different way so that user directly goes and knows that i have to choose this particular product may not be one agency maybe three four agencies together can come up and or we can have a task group which can think about one more particular type of uh, application uh, this uh, type of product should be there from different agencies i think that may be the one of the things uh, i think from user point of view and from the accuracy point of view as uh, i think uh, second day itself was discussed cost is one of the very important thing because a lot of application near the cost is there so sst near the cost how much is there uh, exactly we don't know and that is required from other point of view also for many many other applications so i think we have to see that uh, coastal accuracy from sst how good is there and where we can use this so from cios point of view i think we can involve the cios coast team also in that because they may be using it very effectively so if possible uh, people can talk to them so they or they, they agree and another thing i was thinking of one thing is uh, when we are talking this is the grist this is mostly sea surface temperature we call it that group is but we are including now ice temperature also ist also <laughs> so why not uh, lst also because when we are going near the coastal the lst also should be there so why not this team as a whole is the temperature group not the, the uh, sea surface temperature ice surface temperature or the land surface temperature. so something in maybe uh, not near may not be immediately but near which this also can be think whole all temperature because this affect everywhere uh, if you any study you want to atmosphere ocean interaction everything is important so that way i think that also can be think about So I think those are the priorities I was thinking from the user point of view mostly. Thank you. Thank you very much for those thoughts. Uh, next one's Andrea. Hi, <clears throat> hello. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Andrea Pisano. Uh, researcher uh, at the Italian National Research Council. Uh, I have a rather uh, long experience uh, in the processing of SST, uh, mainly mm, from level two to level three S and level four data. Uh, I am currently leading uh, the SST production center for the Copernicus Marine Service. Uh, and I am also the producer uh, for the Mediterranean Sea and Black Sea uh, SST operational data that are delivered uh, within Copernicus. Uh, well, um, I can give you just some thoughts uh, based on my experience. First of all, uh, SST uh, uh, products strictly uh, depend on upstream uh, data. So uh, they evolve with the evolving satellite constellations. And any plans for the future is subject to uncertainty on the total amount of data, uh, quality and time of delivery. So uh, it is important to maintain strong uh, interactions uh, with space agencies. Uh, as for example, in my case, ESA and UMETSAT, um, and extend to other uh, uh international agencies uh, uh, but i think it is also important uh, uh, to maintain a high interaction with uh, users um, at least within copernicus uh, all the evolution are user driven so uh, this means to maintain uh, a regular contact with external users, stakeholders, stakeholders and so on. Uh, so one thought for the Grist uh, perhaps could be uh, to um, promote uh, training session on a regular basis, uh, for example, twice a year. 
maybe this can help the interaction uh, with users. Uh, well, a substantial effort will need to, to be put uh, for a coastal application. Uh, this is uh, uh, for sure a priority also uh, taking advantage of the new high resolution future mission, uh, such as Trishna, Simr, and LSTM. That <clears throat> could lead to uh, uh, dedicated SST uh, coastal products. Uh, the use of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, we already uh, developed um, uh, some algorithms uh, for feature uh, uh, enhance the feature resolution. The results uh, are promising, uh, and these algorithms will be integrated uh, next year. Uh, one last thing is uh, 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 it is important uh, uh, to have. Um, uh, accurate and stable uh, climate data record from level 2 to level 3S and level 4. Um, and in general, a level 3S uh, um, are also uh, used uh, in data simulation, both the near real time and the uh, reprocessed one for the analysis. So it is important to uh, pay attention to the level 3S production. And uh, well, I think that's all. Uh, yeah, I think that's all from my side. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.